So we now know, courtesy of the testimony of Dr. Tobin, an expert pulmonologist, the precise moment when the life left George Floyd's body. And we also know that for three more minutes after George Floyd was dead, Derek Chauvin continued to press his knee into George Floyd's neck. The evidence has shown Derek Chauvin is guilty of murdering George Floyd. Let's talk about that because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So first of all, I'm dressed up because I just finished an appearance with Stephanie Rule on MSNBC talking about the Derek Chauvin trial for the murder of George Floyd. And while it's all fresh in my mind, I wanna just kind of tick through some of what we saw um, of the expert witnesses who have been testifying in what is some of the most powerful testimony, not only in the trial, but some of the most powerful testimony I have ever seen in my 30 years as a prosecutor, including 22 years as a homicide prosecutor in the courts of Washington, D.C. Let me talk about Dr. Tobin. Um, he is an expert pulmonologist. He wrote a book that people refer to as the Bible on breathing. The man was a remarkable expert witness. I would call him an expert, expert witness. And I'm going to talk about why I say that in a few minutes. But First of all, let's talk about what he did so brilliantly. He testified and gave the jurors basically the one, two, three of George Floyd's death that they were not going to get anywhere else, including from the medical examiner, Dr. Baker, who performed the autopsy on George Floyd, because there are some things that are curious about his autopsy report. I'll talk about those in a minute as well. But here's what Dr. Tobin did so brilliantly. He said, yes, the Hennepin County Medical Examiner, Dr. Baker, in his autopsy report, said that the cause of death was cardiopulmonary arrest. In essence, his heart and his breathing stopped. Okay? One might observe that everybody's cause of death is cardiopulmonary arrest, at least in part, because regardless of the injuries from which you're suffering, your heart and your breathing stops. But it doesn't say anywhere in the autopsy report, that this was death by asphyxiation, that George Floyd's body was deprived of enough oxygen to continue to live. So here is how Dr. Tobin framed and diffused what the jurors will hear later today from Dr. Baker who performed the autopsy. He said, yes, George Floyd died of cardiopulmonary arrest. That's the one. What's the two? The reason he suffered cardiopulmonary arrest was because of a deprivation of oxygen. And what is the three? The deprivation of oxygen was caused by improper, unlawful, ultimately, restraint being applied by Derek Chauvin and his fellow officers. That's the one, two, three of the homicide of George Floyd. So when you look at the autopsy report alone, this is why it was so brilliant to put on Dr. Tobin first, who never examined George Floyd, but to put him on first to frame what the jury will now hear from Dr. Baker. Because on page two of the autopsy report, Dr. Baker says, for example, that he found no life-threatening injuries. How can that be? George Floyd was killed. How could you find no life-threatening injuries? He also found no injuries to the neck, either the exterior of the neck or internally. And so the defense would argue, you see, no injuries to the neck means that Derek Chauvin wasn't putting much pressure on George Floyd's neck with his knee. The, the videotape is deceiving. So those are really consequential findings that would seem to help Derek Chauvin's defense. But Dr. Tobin said, no, you can deprive somebody of oxygen 
by putting pressure on their neck and constricting their airway and putting pressure on their torso and making it difficult for them to pull enough oxygen into their lungs to oxygenate the blood to send it around the body and keep a person alive by handcuffing them behind their back by putting them on their stomach by applying pressure across the span of his body you can deprive a person of enough oxygen to live and that is what Derek Chauvin and those other officers did and you can do it with no external injuries you can do it without any internal injuries to the neck. Not a broken or fractured hyoid bone, not fractured thyroid cartilage, not bruising externally or internally. These are findings that are generally associated with manual strangulation cases. I've handled many. So Dr. Tobin diffused and framed everything that the jury will now hear from Dr. Baker and it will all make sense and the defense won't be able to take advantage of it. It's called drawing the sting of testimony before the, ju the jury ever hears it, and it was brilliant. Here's something else that I have to share with you. Uh, this is a little inside prosecutorial baseball because expert witnesses can often be dry, right? They can often lose the jury in the technical jargon, and Dr. Tobin was none of that. He was like the most engaging professor imaginable. I mean, it was brilliant that he had the jury touch their own neck in a very visceral way This starts to bring into the courtroom and into the jury box some of what George Floyd was experiencing. But here's the other thing he did that was brilliant. He answered questions in a way that not only provided the information to the jury that they needed, but it provided it in a way that was really damaging to the defense case. Here's what I mean by that. One of my favorite answers was um, when he was asked, you know, well, doctor, we've seen on the videotape George Floyd talking before he lapsed into unconsciousness. And sometimes people say, if you can talk, that means you can breathe. Dr. Tobin didn't just answer the question by saying, medically speaking, let me describe why it's not accurate to say, if you can talk, you can breathe, because it's not true. You can talk but still be deprived of drawing in enough oxygen to sustain life. That's not how he framed his answer. Here's what he said. Yes, I'm a prosecution nerd, I know. He said, it would be dangerous for someone to suggest that if you can talk, you can breathe enough to sustain life. What did he do by that answer? By framing his answer that way, when the defense attorney stood up and started cross-examining Dr. Tobin or other witnesses or when he stands before the jury in closing argument and the defense attorney tells them, if you can talk, you can breathe enough to sustain life, not only is that inaccurate medically, but Dr. Tobin told us it's dangerous for somebody to make that assertion. That was the brilliance of the way Dr. Tobin framed his answers, not just the information he communicated to the jury, but how he communicated it because he was taking away defense arguments along the way during the course of his testimony. Um, I presented lots of expert witnesses in my 30 years as a prosecutor. I don't think I've ever seen one quite so compelling in everything he said and did, as was Dr. Tobin. Now let me forecast where I think the defense is going and we're going to be talking a lot about this in the coming days because the defense's marquee expert medical examiner, forensic pathologist, is a gentleman named Dr. David Fowler. Dr. Fowler was the chief medical examiner for the state of Maryland for nearly two decades. He is a really accomplished medical examiner, forensic pathologist, and he's a very strong trial witness. I know this because he was my expert witness on a number of cases, some of the really difficult cases I had in the courts of Washington, D.C. on cause and manner of death. Um, he grew up in South Africa. He became a medical examiner in South Africa. He has done a lot of autopsies in his life. Um, he also happens to have a lot of gravitas and a very impressive accent, and he just comes across as a really strong 
um, expert witness, as a medical examiner, as a forensic pathologist. So he will be a force to contend with. And here's what I predict he will focus on. He's going to talk about the adrenaline surge that a body produces when restraint is applied and how that adrenaline surge can impact the organs and the processes of the body and how it can factor in to the cause of death. You might even hear about something called excited delirium. We'll talk about that more moving forward. But there was a telltale sign at the end of the defense closing argument when Attorney Nelson said George Floyd died of a combination of, you know, drugs in his system, burgeoning heart disease, and adrenaline. I said, the adrenaline piece is what we're going to hear a lot about from Dr. David Fowler. I don't think it will be a winning defense, but it will be a straight face defense. It will be a consequential issue. But everything I've seen from the prosecution tells me they are up to the task of defeating any and all claims that George Floyd's death had anything to do with drugs, with heart disease, with adrenaline, or with an angry crowd, which wasn't angry. They were just trying to stop the police from murdering a man. None of that had anything to do with George Floyd's death. It was all about the unlawful restraint, neck and torso, the unlawful positioning, hands behind the back in the prone position, which police policy and procedures says you should not do. All of that is what contributed to the death, and that's what makes it criminal. That's what makes it murder. But stay tuned, because there is still a battle royale brewing on the medical examiner front, the battle of the expert witnesses, which we have not infrequently in murder cases. Thank you for bearing with me during that stream of consciousness discussion about what I'm seeing in real time in the Derek Chauvin trial for the murder of George Floyd. I'll be back at it tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day until we see justice done, until we see Derek Chauvin held accountable for the murder of one of our fellow citizens, George Floyd. Because for George and his family and the community and our nation, justice matters. Folks, stay safe, stay tuned, and I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.